Clinton Eastwood Jr. is an American actor and film director. After achieving success in the Western TV series Rawhide, Eastwood rose to international fame with his role as the man with no name in Wikipedia. Born May 31, 1930, aged 94 years, San Francisco, California, United States. Children Scott Eastwood, Francesca Eastwood, Kyle Eastwood, Moore. Spouse Dina Eastwood. M. 1996-2014, Maggie Johnson, M. 1953-1984, Height, 1 1.93 M. Parents, Ruth Wood, Clinton Eastwood Sr., Organizations Founded, Malpaso Productions, Viva Records. Clinton Eastwood Jr. was born May 31, 1930 in San Francisco, to Clinton Eastwood Sr. a bond salesman and later manufacturing executive for Georgia Pacific Corporation, and Ruth Wood, nee Margaret Ruth Runner, a housewife turned IBM clerk. He grew up in nearby Piedmont. At school Clint took interest in music and mechanics, but was an otherwise bored student. This resulted in being held back a grade. In 1949, the year he is said to have graduated from high school, his parents and younger sister Jean moved to Seattle. Clint spent a couple years in the Pacific Northwest himself, operating log Bronx in Springfield, Oregon, with summer gigs life guarding in Renton, Washington. Returning to California in 1951, he did a two-year stint at Fort Ord Military Reservation and later enrolled at Ella City College, but dropped out to pursue acting. During the mid-1950s he landed uncredited bit parts in such B-films as Revenge of the Creature, 1955, and Tarantula, 1955, while digging swimming pools and driving a garbage truck to supplement his income. In 1958, he landed his first consequential acting role in the long-running TV show Rawhide, 1959, with Eric Fleming. Although only a secondary player, the first seven seasons, he was promoted to series star when Fleming departed, both literally and figuratively, in its final year along the way becoming a recognizable face to television viewers around the country. Eastwood's big-screen breakthrough came as the man with no name in Sergio Leone's trilogy of excellent spaghetti westerns, A Fistful of Dollars, 1964, for a few dollars more, 1965, and The Good, The Bad and the Ugly, 1966. The movies were shown exclusively in Italy during their respective copyright years with Enrico Maria Salerno providing the voice of Eastwood's character, finally getting American distribution in 1967-68. As the last film racked up respectable grosses, Eastwood, 37, rose from a barely registering actor to sought-after commodity in just a matter of months. Again a success was the late blooming star's first U.S.-made western, Hang, M. High, 1968. He followed that up with the lead role, in Coogan's Bluff, 1968, the loose inspiration for the TV series McLeod, 1970, before playing second fiddle to Richard Burton in the World War II epic Where Eagles Dare, 1968, and Lee Marvin in the bizarre musical Paint, Your Wagon, 1969, in Two Mules for Sister Sarah, 1970, and Kelly's Heroes, 1970, Eastwood leaned in an experimental direction by combining tough guy action with offbeat humor. 1971, proved to be his busiest year in film. He starred as a sleazy Union soldier in The Beguiled, 1971, to critical acclaim, and made his directorial debut with the classic erotic thriller play Misty for Me, 1971. His role as the hard-edged police inspector in Dirty Harry, 1971, Meanwhile, boosted him to cultural icon status and helped popularize the loose canon cop genre. Eastwood put out a steady stream of entertaining movies thereafter. The Western's Joe Kidd, 1972, High Plains Drifter, 1973, and The Outlaw Josie Wales, 1976. His first of six on-screen collaborations would then live in Love Sandra Locke. The Dirty Harry sequel's Magnum Force, 1973, and The Enforcer, 1976, the action-packed road adventures Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, 1974, and The Gauntlet, 1977, and the prison film Escape from Alcatraz, 
1979. He branched out into the comedy genre in 1978 with Every Which Way But Loose, 1978, which became the biggest hit of his career up to that time, taking inflation into account, it still is. In short, the Iger sanction, 1975, notwithstanding, the 1970s were non-stop success for Eastwood. Eastwood kicked off the 1980s with Any Which Way You Can, 1980, the blockbuster sequel to Every Which Way But Loose, the fourth Dirty Harry film, Sudden Impact, 1983, was the highest grossing film of the franchise and spawned his trademark catchphrase, Make My Day. He also starred in Bronco Billy, 1980, Firefox, 1982, Tightrope, 1984, City Heat, 1984, Pale Rider, 1985, and Heartbreak Ridge, 1986, all of which were solid hits, with Honky Dink Man, 1982, being his only commercial failure of the period. In 1988, he did his fifth and final Dirty Harry movie, The Dead Pool, 1988. Although it was a success overall, it did not have the box office punch the previous films had. About this time, without trite bombs like Pink Cadillac, 1989, and The Rookie, 1990, it seemed Eastwood's star was declining as it never had before. He then started taking on low-key projects, directing Bird, 1988, a biopic of Charlie Parker, that earned him a Golden Globe, and starring in and directing White Hunter Black Heart, 1990, and an even, loose biopic of John Huston, both films had a limited release. Eastwood bounced back big time with his dark western Unforgiven, 1992, which garnered the then 62-year-old his first ever Academy Award nomination, Best Actor, and an Oscar win for Best Director. Churning out a quick follow-up hit, he took on the Secret Service and In the Line of Fire, 1993, then accepted second billing for the first time, since 1970 in the interesting but poorly received A Perfect World, 1993, with Kevin Costner. Next was A Love Story, The Bridges of Madison County, 1995, where Eastwood surprised audiences with a sensitive performance, alongside none other than Meryl Streep, but it soon became apparent he was going backwards after his brief revival. Subsequent films were credible, but nothing really stuck out. Absolute Power, 1997, and Space Cowboys, 2000, did well enough, while True Crime, 1999, and Blood Work, 2002, were received badly, as was Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, 1997, which he directed but didn't appear in. Eastwood surprised again in the mid-2000s, returning to the top of the list with Million Dollar Baby, 2004, also starring Hilary Swank and Morgan Freeman. The hugely successful drama won for Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director for Eastwood. He scored his second Best Actor nomination, too. His next starring vehicle, Gran Torino, 2008, earned almost $30 million in its opening weekend and was his highest grosser unadjusted for inflation. 2012 saw him in a rare light-hearted movie, Trouble with the Curve, 2012, as well as a reality show, Mrs. Eastwood and Company, 2012. Between acting jobs, he chalked up an impressive list of credits behind the camera. He directed Mystic River, 2003, in which Sean Penn and Tim Robbins gave Oscar-winning performances, Flags of Our Fathers, 2006, Letters from Iwo Jima, 2006, Nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, Changeling, 2008, A Vehicle for Angelina Jolie, Invictus, 2009, Again with Freeman, Hereafter, 2010, J. Edgar, 2011, Jersey Boys, 2014, American Sniper, 2014, 2014's Top Box Office Champ, Sully, 2016, Starring Tom Hanks as hero pilot Chesley Sullenberger, and the 1517 to Paris, 2018. Back on screens after a considerable absence, he played an unlikely drug courier in The Mule, 2018, which reached the top of the box office with a nine-figure gross, then directed Richard Jewell, 2019. At age 91, Eastwood made history as the oldest actor to star above the title in a movie with the release of Cry Macho, 2021. Away from the limelight, Eastwood has led an aberrant existence, 
and is described by biographer Patrick McGilligan as a cunning manipulator of the media. His convoluted slew of partners and children are now somewhat factually acknowledged, but for the first three decades of his celebrity, his personal life was kept top secret, and several of his families were left out of the official narrative. The actor refuses to disclose his exact number of offspring even to this day. He had a long-time relationship with similarly abstruse co-star Locke, who died aged 74 in 2018, though for her entire public life she masqueraded about being younger, and has fathered at least eight children by at least six different women, in an unending string of liaisons, many of which overlapped. He has been married only twice, however, with a mere three of his progeny coming from those unions. His known children are, Lori Murray, B. 1954, whose mother is unidentified, Kimber Eastwood, B. 1964, with Stuntuman Rocks in Tunis, Kyle Eastwood, B. 1968, and Allison Eastwood, B. 1972, with his first ex-wife, Margaret Neville Johnson, Scott Eastwood, B. 1986, and Catherine Eastwood, B. 1988, with stewardess Jasleen Reeves, Francesca Eastwood, B. 1993, with actress Frances Fisher, and Morgan Eastwood, B. 1996, with his second ex-wife, Dina Eastwood. The entire time that he lived with Locke she was legally married to sculptor Gordon Anderson. Eastwood has real estate holdings in Bel Air, La Quinta, Carmel by the Sea, Castle, in remote northern California, Idaho's Sun Valley, and Keith, Hawaii. Family. Spouses. Dina Eastwood, March, the 31st. 1996, December, the 22nd, 2014, divorced, one child, Margaret Neville Johnson, December, the 19th, 1953, November, the 19th, 1984, divorced, two children, children, Kimber Eastwood, Kyle Eastwood, Allison Eastwood, Scott Eastwood, Catherine Eastwood, Francesca Eastwood, Morgan Eastwood, Laurie Murray, parents, Clinton Eastwood Sr. Ruth Wood, relatives, Jean Eastwood, Bernhardt, sibling, Lowell Murray, grandchild, Clint Frovarp McCartney, grandchild, Kelsey Hayford, grandchild, Clinton McCartney Jr., great-grandchild, Penelope McCartney, great-grandchild, Wells Hayford, great-grandchild, Bo Hayford, great-grandchild. Trademarks. During the credits at the end of his movies, the camera will move around the location it was filmed in, after which there will be freeze a frame for the rest of the credits. Frequently uses shadow lightning in his films. Known on set as a director for filming very few, takes and having an easy shooting schedule. Tim Robbins once said that when working on Mystic River, 2003, Eastwood would usually ask for only one take, or two, if you were lucky, and that a day of filming would consist of starting, no earlier than 9 a.m. and you leave, usually, after lunch. The lead characters in his movie are often outsiders, with a dark past they prefer not to remember, narrow eyes and towering height. Trivia. At age 74, he became the oldest person to win the Best Director Oscar for Million Dollar Baby, 2004. When directing, he simply says OK instead of action and, cut, source, shootout, 2003, learned mountain climbing for the Eiger Sanction, 1975, because he felt the scenes were too dangerous for him to pay a stuntman to do for him. He was the last climber up the totem pole in Monument Valley, and as part of the contract, the movie crew removed the pittons left by decades of other climbers. The scene where he was hanging off the mountain by a single rope was actually Eastwood, and not a stuntman. When he directs, he insists that his actors wear as little makeup as possible and he likes to print first takes. As a result, his films consistently finish on schedule and on budget. As a director, he has always refused to test screen his films before their release. Quotes. On Sandra Locke, she plays the victim very well. Unfortunately, she had cancer and so she plays that card. To Eli Wallach prior to starting work on The Good, The Bad and the Ugly, 1966, never trust anyone on an Italian movie. I know about these things. Stay away from special effects and explosives. What he says after a take, instead of, cut. That's enough of that sheet. I like the libertarian view, which is to leave everyone alone. Even as a kid, I was annoyed by people who wanted to tell everyone how to live. I love every aspect of the creation of motion pictures, and I guess I am committed to it for life. Salaries. Hereafter, 2010, $6 million. Invictus, 2009, $6 million. In the Line of Fire, 1,993, 
seven million dollars white hunter blackheart one thousand nine hundred ninety no upfront fee in exchange for unspecified percentage of the gross heartbreak ridge one thousand nine hundred eighty six ten million dollars pale rider one thousand nine hundred eighty five six million dollars city heat one thousand nine hundred eighty four five million dollars tightrope one thousand nine hundred eighty four five million dollars sudden impact one thousand nine hundred eighty three thirty million dollars include salary and 60 percent of all profits firefox 1982 three million dollars plus ten percent of gross every which way but loose 1978 16 million dollars after 15 percent take from the gross kelly's heroes 1970 one million dollars two mules for sister sarah 1970 seven hundred fifty thousand dollars paint your wagon one thousand nine hundred sixty nine six hundred thousand dollars where eagles dare one thousand nine hundred sixty nine eight hundred fifty thousand dollars coogan's bluff one thousand nine hundred sixty eight one million dollars hang m high one thousand nine hundred sixty eight four hundred thousand dollars plus twenty five percent of gross the witches one thousand nine hundred sixty nine twenty thousand dollars the good the bad and the ugly one thousand nine hundred sixty seven two hundred fifty thousand dollars plus ten percent of western hemisphere profits for a few dollars more one thousand nine hundred sixty seven fifty thousand dollars a fistful of dollars one thousand nine hundred sixty seven fifteen thousand dollars rawhide one thousand nine hundred fifty nine seven hundred dollars per episode season one ambush at cimarron pass one thousand nine hundred fifty eight seven hundred fifty dollars the first traveling sales lady one thousand nine hundred fifty six seven hundred fifty dollars star in the dust one thousand nine hundred fifty six seventy five dollars francis in the navy one thousand nine hundred fifty five three hundred dollars <laughs>